for this video, we're going to discuss decking products. Uh, we'll go through briefly the ones that you shouldn't use in fiberglass and the ones that are ideal for using in fiberglass. Yeah? I've written a list on this board of uh, five commonly available products. So we've got Marine Play, OSB2 butt jointed, OSB3 butt jointed, WPP Play, and OSB3 T and G. Yeah? We start at the bottom, the ones that you should avoid using. Uh, first is Marine Play. This is basically because marine plays are not very really good, obviously it's soaking up moisture or liquids, so it's very difficult for the fiberglass to get a good bond on marine play. Yeah? So don't use marine play, we'll remove that from our list. Next product to avoid, and then we come across it quite commonly, is OSB2. OSB2 is quite a cheap product, uh, hence it's being used quite commonly. You should avoid using it because OSB2 is not pre-expanded. Yeah? When boards are manufactured, they have a very low moisture content so that the glues will bond properly. And then they basically store them for a while, they absorb moisture and expand to their in situ size. Yeah? So an OSB2 product is not pre expanded, so it'll expand on the roof and stress in the joints. Yeah? So avoid using OSB2. Yeah? Now we have three products that it's possible to use. Um, OSB3 butt joint and WBP play. Basically, there's not a lot between them. Um, I would say that if you're going to use a butt jointed product, then it's probably better to use the butt WBP play because it's a little bit stronger. So, uh, through choice with butt jointed products, use the WBP play. Yeah? Um, <coughs> so, you can use this product and you can also use the ideal one is the OSB3 T and G. Yeah? Uh, if we briefly talk about the problems with butt joints, um, if I draw on the board, uh, uh, if you like an exaggerated butt joint, it's the end of one board, it's the end of the next board. When you use butt jointed products, such as the ply, you should in theory be the three millimeter gap between the products. This gap then allows the joint to close up or to open up as the decking gets hot and cold and expands and contracts. Yeah? The problem with fiberglass if it's fully bonded all the way across that surface, all the way across this surface. When this joint moves, the only bit of fiberglass allowing the movement is what's bridging the joint. So what we would do to improve this situation is to put in a two inch masking tape across the joint, which stops the fiberglass bonding 25 mil either side of the joint. Then we put a four inch uh, reinforcing bandage across the joint and our main layer. Yeah? So now we're in a situation of the masking tape stops the glass bonding either side of the joint, which allows 50 mil of product to either stretch or indeed to close up. So if you do use a butt jointed product, a two inch masking tape, four inch reinforcing bandage, fiberglass, and then the main layer goes over. So you've got two layers across the joint, and then two layers can bridge or stretch a little bit to allow for movement in the joint. Yeah? One of the reasons we advise against using butt jointed products is, in theory, the joints should all be structurally supported with timber underneath. It's quite rare that the carpenter or the builder will put noggins across uh, underneath carrying all of the joints. What after happens more often is the board is cut back to the nearest convenient joint or joist. Um, and to be honest, by the time you've done the work of cutting the boards back to the joint and then reinforcing the board, the joints with fiberglass, it can be quicker and more practical and a better job just to use the correct product, which is the T and G board. Yeah? So if we remove this diagram of a butt jointed product, we remove WBP play, as we discussed it, we now come down to the best product to use, which is OSB3 T and G. Yeah? <coughs> the three uh, designation on the board means it's pre-expanded to a 6 or 7 percent moisture content which is what it will go to if you left it in your living room or 
in, in any dry environment, it absorbs ambient moisture and it, ex it expands, uh, it takes on moisture to about 6 or 7% by volume and then it expands to its finished size. So an OSB3 is already pre-expanded. If you use the TNG, uh, what you have an effect then is this on the joint. And the manufacturer of the OSB3 TNGs, they all leave an expansion gap in the bottom of the board to allow for the expansion on a hot day, etc. Yeah? The other thing is the top of the joint is closed tight and you no need to put the reinforcement on the bandage. We can just go straight across with one layer of fiberglass. So it's a very efficient product to use because you're not bandaging or reinforcing the joints. Um, and you're not hunting the joists all the time uh, because in theory anywhere this joint lands the one side's supporting the other side etc yeah so if i show you an example of a tng board this would be the top side of the board and i'm not sure if you can see that clearly but the joint is tight together it's almost like a hairline joint and then if we look at the other side, you should see there's a slight gap there, which would be the bottom of the board, and that gap is allowing for some expansion of the roof on a hot day. Yeah. So for the purposes of the rest of the uh, training modules for fiberglass roofing, um, we're going to start off, the next video will be discussing fitting decking, um, and indeed we're going to use the OSB3 8x2, 2.4 times 600 uh, TNG jointed product. Okay. Northern Building Plastics. Why collect when we can deliver?